Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today here in the BMW M studio here at M Town, the home of BMW M in Garching, north of Munich in Germany, with some exciting news that I'm buying to add to the Shmi Mobiles a new BMW M3. Now I took a first look at the car back in summer ahead of the launch and instantly knew that one of these had to be coming to the garage. Today we're going to be talking specification. We've got two of the cars here in the Isle of Man green, but I want to run through some of the options which I actually have to lock in quite soon for delivery of the car next year. We'll talk much more about that, how it's going to fit into the garage. In fact, there's a bit of a garage shuffle overall, so stay tuned. I'll tell you more about that as well. But also here, you might spot over on the stage the new M4 GT3 race car. We're going to take a first ever look at that while I'm here as well. But let's talk about the future Schmimobile, the new BMW M3. First things first, let's take a look at the two M3s that we have here. Parked opposite ways round, we can go through all of the details and talk about the spec, but then we're going to go and explore as well some of the special cars here from BMW Motorsport, including that new M4 GT3. So we're looking at two variants of the new M3. We saw the launch of the M3 and the M4 simultaneously. The M3, of course, the four-door saloon, and the M4 is the two-door coupe. We have the non-competition model here in front. That means this car is rear-wheel drive with the six speed manual gearbox. In this case, you get 480 horsepower. Then if you go to the M3 competition, that means it has the eight speed automatic gearbox, the M eight speed Steptronic. In this case, it's rear wheel drive, but in the future, we'll also be arriving an M X drive version with the switchable four wheel drive system. This car has a little bit more power, 510 horsepower, so 30 horsepower more. Now, of course, both of these cars are very much in the launch specification. So we have the Isle of Man green paintwork with the bright Kyle Army orange interior, which stands out for sure and they're also wearing the 825M wheels, which are very similar to the specification that I'm thinking that I should probably choose. But the first time that I saw the new M3, when I went to see it in the studio, of course, under embargo before it was revealed, as soon as I saw this, it just stood out. Of course, there's been plentiful discussion about the look of the front end, but honestly, in person, you gel with it much more than you might think. But for me, the biggest thing about this car are the rear arches. How cool this looks, the flash of color that you get from that sticking out angle that you have basically how much wider it is than a standard 3 series of course this looks quite significantly different as you come around obviously the diffuser the quad exhaust tailpipes the lip spoiler on the boot lid and this is before you get to some of the details and touches that the car has on the interior so the first thing that i decided actually back when i saw it the first time long before it was revealed was that this was the color to go for isle of man green i think it looks fantastic now i'm going to be complementing the isle of man green with these wheels the bicolor version of the 82 5M. You can also have the 826M, which gives you a slightly different design, but I really like the way these finish and especially the contrast that you have with the paintwork. Now, as standard, you have the red brake calipers. I think for me, against the green, I'm probably going to make those black as well. What I should probably touch on, though, first is between the models. I think, well, in the UK, you can't actually have the non-competition model. There are ways that you could potentially come up with something, but basically it is the M3 competition with the automatic gearbox, with the rear wheel drive at this stage, because the market introduction of the MX drive version will come a little bit later on. Now, when it comes to the interior, both of these cars have the incredibly bright Kyle Army orange, but this one, is the extended leather, where the other car has the full leather, which lets us take a little comparative look between them. Both of these cars have the regular seats as opposed to the new carbon bucket seat that's been introduced for the car, but still a special seat for this model. You can see the way it's designed with the perforations, the illuminated M3 badges that you have in the headrests as well. But the Kyle Army orange is very, very bright. Stands out against the green. I think it's a brilliant launch combination, but probably for me, I'm gonna tone it down just a touch. I'm thinking to go with the Silverstone gray, with the black, the dual tone but as you can see here with the extended leather you get the door cards the seats but the dashboard is all black if i come through and show you the other car and of course there is a small price upgrade to go from the extended to the full but with the full leather you then get the lower sections of the dashboard in the orange as well which i have to say look really really nice and especially with the silverstone which was the same color by the way that i had in the m8 and we'll talk more about the m8 in a moment as well if you're wondering so i quite like the look of the full leather of course, that is nice manual. Imagine when the touring version launches, the estate version with the manual gearbox, that will be very, very cool, especially with the carbon bucket seats. What a combination. But there's something else I'd like to show you. 
I'd like to say a shout out and thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Air for Life and their car sanifier. We're going to be giving away a few of these. I'll tell you about that in just a moment, but it's an air purifier that uses NASA developed technology to eliminate up to 99.9% .9 of the bacteria and viruses, including coronavirus, that you get within the air, on the seats and on the surfaces within the car to help protect the occupants, particularly in the current climate where more people are car sharing and taking taxis. It uses filterless ionization, is human friendly, and also helps with things like allergies, asthma, flu and hay fever along with reducing odours that you'd have from pets and also for example from cigarettes and smoking. They come in three different colours. We've got the storm grey that I'm going to show you, the stealth black and also the ghost white. But to plug this in it uses the car's 12 volt socket. So inside here that is just by the cup holders just here. This simply plugs in and will then work to purify the air within the car when the engine is running nice and easy so like i said we're giving away five of these you'll find all of the information down below about that and what you need to do and also there is a discount code for 10 percent off as well shmi 150 in capitals is the code that you need so a big thanks then to air for life and their car sanifier for sponsoring today's video while i am here let me open up the engine bay quickly a double pull on the bmws for the secondary catch then we can lift this open in the competition the three liter twin power turbo inline six which makes 510 horsepower so over 500 horsepower in a BMW M3 a big step up for the new generation now don't forget I did get to drive the camouflaged prototype version of the non-competition the 480 horsepower with the manual and what an experience that was so I can only imagine what the production car is going to be like when we get to experience them in the not too distant future as well and perhaps see what we can do with this in the future for the time being close that back down I do quite like this design and I think it gives a hint as to what they might do with future variants to come down the line. For the moment though, we have the regular car, the competition model, and this is what I'm gonna be going for. And yeah, I look forward to, uh, to what's gonna happen with this. Before going through all of the full details of the specification that I'm going for on the M3 and some of the other updates with the garage as well, let's go for a quick look around here in the M Studio, starting center stage with the new release, or to be fully revealed, I should say, next year, the M4 GT3 race car. Based on the G82 M4, developed alongside the road car, of course, a lot of similarities, the gigantic front grills, even more open for cooling, the yellow headlights, these massive wide arches, a gigantic wing at the rear, and also, let me show you inside the car as well it's still in the camouflage livery at the moment but even the dashboard actually shares the similar display style that we see on the road cars as well a few changes for new regulations but this follows on from the m8 that came before the m6 before that but the previous version was this the e92 m3 back before the m3 and m4 separated into different models this is the e92 m3 gt2 race car and we've got the m4 gt4 we've got the m2 cs racing the history of the motorsport heritage car alongside the brand new one and then of course these two now then the updates to the garage a few things are going to be changing the m3 is arriving some other cars will be arriving but some cars are going to be leaving as well now you might have spotted earlier when i was talking about the leather on the interior i mentioned the m8 that i had the m8 has now departed it did a lot of miles in a very short amount of time but to avoid confusion the m3 is going to be delivered in the uk it's going to be a uk right hand drive car on a uk number plate far less confusion i think with that and basically I'm going to be spending more time being based in the UK I think going into next year than I have this year with everything that's been going on but let me talk a little bit more then about the car and the options so it's going to be an M3 competition in the auto with the rear wheel drive it's going to be in Isle of Man green it's going to have these wheels the staggered setup 19 inch at the front 20 inch at the rear the 825M it will have the black brake calipers and the interior like I said will be the Silverstone grey I think I'm going to be going with the standard seats as opposed to the carbon seats but I will try and find one to exactly decide that in the coming days before I have to submit the spec. I'm undecided as well whether I do go for the full leather to have the lower dashboard, but I do think it looked very, very nice. They do actually offer in the UK what they call the ultimate pack, which gives you everything. Carbon interior, carbon exterior, all of the tech, but that is obviously quite a pricey option as well as a result. I'm not sure if I will go for it and completely fully load the car or if I'll select individually the things that I would like. For example, the laser lights, that's an upgrade option. You can have the visual carbon on the exterior but to be honest seeing the car here with all of the gloss black for things like the mirrors the side skirts the lip at the rear I actually think it works pretty well of course you do have the carbon fiber roof uh, as standard on the car so I'm not sure about that one as well I will go for the technology pack which gives you the drive recorder it gives you the adaptive cruise control sensor and some of the other technology uh, in that respect the comfort pack as well to get comfort access and the power fold 
bootlid as a result. So some of these things I do need to think a little bit more about. Don't get me wrong, I'd love the manual, but I think for me, this is more a car to daily drive effectively, which is why the competition at this stage makes more sense. Maybe in the future, I'll even consider swapping it up into the MX Drive version. But picture this car then with the gray interior as opposed to the orange interior, and you're roughly looking at the next Shmimobile. The question will be which number plate exactly it is gonna wear when the time comes. One of the SH, then the numbers. I'll try and find something that connects to the car, then MEE, -E, of course. Perhaps it could be the successor to the red Focus RS. Maybe it could wear the 13 plate. It's an M3, the three after all. I've got a few to choose from. We'll have to think about that that in due course as well but either way I think it's going to be a pretty cool car I think it will be in the garage for a year or two it's that kind of thing you know it's not going to be a permanent car forever but it's going to be a car that gets used an awful lot these things just fantastic to drive and obviously I'd love to get familiar with the M drift analyzer the drift control that you have inside and some of the other technology and hear plenty of the sound we'll have to see what comes with all of it down the line in any case though I'm going to be spending a little bit more time playing around with the configurator to make sure I get it absolutely spot on before delivery I guess towards the spring maybe early summer of next year 2021 so about six to nine months from now depends really when the cars start arriving over in the UK obviously different regions take a different amount of time and who knows where I'll be at the time and when I'll be able to actually go and pick it up which seems to often be something that plagues me so in general updates about the garage the Toyota GR Supra is still advertised for sale the red Ford Focus RS is going to be sold at some point soon that's always been the plan the car is now about two and a half years old also a bit of a surprise I think I'm going to be selling my Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. Now that car's almost two years old, but I've got some plans. I've got some ideas which might surprise you as well in terms of what's going to replace it. And I think there might be something else that will be departing from the garage as well. A bit of a shuffle, an opportunity to bring some new cars in. Of course, the AMG GT Black Series is on the horizon. The M3 is on the horizon. And there might be some other things as well. Some things I can't say too much about at this stage, but I tell you what, Isle of Man Green is going to fit right in to the very colorful lineup of the Shmimobiles. I think it's a fantastic color, especially when you get those light reflections of the rear arches. This, this is one of the best bits about this car. Oh, it actually comes with some protection film. Of course, I will be putting PPF on the car when the time comes to ensure that we keep the paintwork looking fantastic. Learned a bit of a lesson around that in the not too distant past, but this car, very cool. That car, ridiculously cool and I cannot wait for the future Shmimobile arrival of the M3. So let me know guys, what do you think about the spec? Should I go full on and go for the ultimate pack or should I choose exactly what I want? Those are the decisions I think, but it's gonna be green with a silver interior and with these wheels, not black wheels because I'm not a big fan of black wheels. I'm sorry to all of the people out there who think it should have the plain black wheels. That's not for me at all. Anyway, excited beyond belief. Can't wait for the car to arrive. And a big thanks again to the sponsor of the video, Air for Life with the car sanifier. The description down below contains all of the information about that. We'll be giving away five sets as well. And you can also find the discount code. A quick extra clip because I have to share this outside at the home of BMW M here in M Town. We now have a current Shmimobile alongside a future Shmimobile. I always like my bright and bold colors, as you know, obviously the mystic blue, but the SLS is currently filthy, but this is my first time seeing the new M3's Isle of and green out in daylight and paint colors always look different in natural light as opposed to when you see them in studios in the studio it looks great but sometimes you wonder is that going to translate when you then see it outside i have to say yes it does this will suit and be perfect in the shmima beals lineup and i definitely think the bright wheels go with that well the red calipers as i said not quite for me i'm going to go with the black calipers for, for sure i think just slightly less of the conflict of colors on the car overall but definitely the color choice for me isle of man green i think it looks fantastic that's actually all Although, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your support. I'll see you very soon. Cheers.